You need to find this place or we'll be late. Make a left on Astrology Avenue. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant right. It should be right here at 444 Spirit Way. Oh, turn, turn, turn. It looks like Renee. Yay, we're on time. The James and Kelly Show. Great, let's start the show. Hi, Kelly. We'll never Hi. get tired of that. Never, never get tired of it. <laughs> I, Happy I'm belated good. Easter to you. And same to you, Kelly. You went to Texas. I <laughs> did go to Texas. And I, you stayed I in. And- day. I, was, I stayed in. It was raining and pouring in San Diego, California. So yeah, we yeah, stayed in. Watched some great movies and hung out with Pearl and had some friends come over. It was fun. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you flew okay in Texas? Everything was I fine? I flew okay. I made it to Grandparents' Day just in the nick of time, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> which was a lot of fun. I went to a big Easter egg hunt. And uh, all in all, it was just, it was, oh, I went to uh, August soccer game. Oh, I did all the grandparents' things. I did a book. Oh. I was was just concerned because of airlines and traffic. I know you were. And as we talk about the astrology, it really will ramp up. But I actually was great, James. For me, it was easy in, easy out. Good. I was sending you green light the whole time. Thank (laughs) you. Appreciated that. Hey, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Uh, And Margaret, hello. Maria. Hi, Dee Dee. Celebrating your gram in heaven. Hi, Maureen. Doreen, Dawn, Christy. Hi, Sharon. How am I feeling? I'm feeling fabulous. I'm feeling great. Yeah, I'm really... The best I felt in kind of years. Yes. <laughs> How great is that? Annual physical and they gave me an A plus. So I'm really happy yes. about that. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Sharon Marquise is here and she's been following. She's 82 years old and she says, I've been following you since the beginning. I read that, Sharon. Thank you very much. Really. I'm glad you still remember who I am because oh I don't remember. Gosh. Yeah, it's been a long 40 something years. And uh, wow. it had, really has been. Amazing. What a ride, James. What a ride. What a ride. And, and everybody, Kelly and I want you to know that I think we mentioned a little bit before we're changing our format yes. because we're getting a lot more people who want to get more in tune with us and change the format a little bit to reach a little uh, more people. So at April 29th is our new show, a new format. It's going to be called, the show is going to be changed, changing names. It's going to be called James and Prague Life After Death and Beyond Kelly White. Yes. So a whole and we have an amazing first guest for that show. Amazing first guest, uh, Susan Geisman, who's a wonderful yeah. medium from Florida. So, yes, yeah, so it'll be fun. So, uh, everybody, be aware of that. <laughs> we'll make sure you notif- you're notified about all that. This would still be on at the same time, and you'll still be able to find us. Yeah, it'll be like a podcast, YouTube podcast, but it'll be a, we'll do a live show in that yeah. time, but then we'll, we'll spread it out through YouTube's. Yeah, make it easy. Perfect. Make it so, easy. Ellie, how are we doing with astrology? We're, okay. we're, in the, we're in the eclipse season now, officially, correct? Uh, Way officially. Yeah, way <laughs> officially. We are in the trenches right now. And it is, it, it. are you feeling it? Oh, yeah. I would think that everybody's been feeling this energy because it's been an, it's intense energy. I mean, yeah. e- intense. My gosh. It's just like but bumper cars. That's a good way to describe it, actually. And here's what I would say about April. I mean, and I'm just going to talk about Mercury retrograde right now. But I will tell you, this is going to be, you know, a doozy to remember. You know, I mean, this is a huge month because it has a lot of energy. It has a lot of upheaval to it and has a lot of change and it has a lot of crisis and drama to it. So just like a little bullet point is it's a complicated Mercury retrograde that I'm going to talk about now. We also have a total solar eclipse across the United States. We have a Saturn and Mars conjunction, they're enemies and they get together in Aquarius. It's going to be very intense. What date is that, Kelly? That's uh, April um, 9th and 10th. So that whole eclipse day and the days after. Correct. Correct, Amundo. Correct, my friend. It's not going to be. Stay under the covers. (laughs) Stay under the covers. We'll talk about that. Absolutely. And then we have a a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, and that has not been seen like this for over thousands of years, probably. So it's so much. But let's talk about tonight, we're going to talk about Mercury's impact, because this is a very, uh, Mercury, the impact of a Mercury for the month of April is huge. It's just enormous. Um, Mercury's impact is going to be especially strong this month, because we're going through a very challenging retrograde cycle. Okay, so let's talk about what Mercury retrograde is. I mean, it's uh, when a planet slows down. And it looks like it's going backwards, but it's really just slow, slow, slow down. 
and Mercury is the fastest moving planet. And so when Mercury goes down, it really um, gets things mixed up and it, things. It, it gunks things up. It gunks the works. Things up. I like that word. I like that. Gunks the works. Yeah. It gunks it up. I mean, and Mercury retrograde is notorious for technology. So watch your computer, save everything. As soon as you write it, save it because things can happen. It also has a lot to do with travel disruptions. So when you were talking about traveling, James, you were absolutely that's right. That's what I was concerned. And also you'll see a lot of cars on the side of the road because the yeah. car parts have to speak to each other and that gets screwed up, Mercury retrograde, and yep. things are slower. Telephones, miscommunication everywhere. Yes, so yes. Double, you know, right? Yeah, absolutely. Delays, setbacks, uncertainty. Here's the yep. other thing, mental fog. Okay. Really? You, yes, mental fog is huge with this. Uh, disordered thoughts, you may not be, you know, thinking clearly. And um, also it brings a sense of stagnation. So you might feel like anything you do is just not working. But it has a lot of benefits to Mercury retrograde, but I mean, it really does. It, it all is designed to help move us forward eventually. So let's talk about this particular Mercury retrograde, because it's like none other that we've ever had before. And this is April 1st today, and this goes to April 25th. So it Mercury retrograde April 1st today, it moved, it's in Pisces in Vedic astrology and it moved into Pisces on March 25th. So I just want to talk about that for a second because that was the day of the lunar eclipse and that <laughs> lunar eclipse that with that degree, when it went from, um, it went from Pisces into Aries and Pisces again, it was, it's called Gandanta and that means drowning. And the next that several hours later, after that degree mark, think about that bridge and the ship. That's what happened Yeah, in Baltimore. That's exactly what happened right then and there. So now we have Mercury retrograde and it is in Aries until April 8th. Okay, Until April 8th. April 8th, Mercury in retrograde then goes from Aries back into Pisces. This is a mess. And when that happens, it happens on the solar eclipse. Uh, the 8th. Exactly. And so we'll be here, everyone. We'll be here. We will be here. here. We'll be here. So not only is Mercury on that solar eclipse going to be retrograde, it's going to be weak because it's in Pisces and it's debilitated in Pisces. It's, so it's things are really going to be wonky, wonky. And it's Gondanta again because it will have gone from Aries into Pisces. So anytime you go from a fire sign to a water sign or a water sign to a fire sign, it's a very treacherous degree. And that happens on April 8th on the solar eclipse that goes through the United States. And James, just for fun, it is an 11 day in numerology, just <laughs> for is, fun. And what does that mean, Kelly? 11 you... day is karma. It okay. means the teacher. It means we'll learn a lot. It will be intense. It, ha it brings a lot of karma to it. Yeah. So, so the best thing you do is, is just, I would just step back and observe. Yes. Don't get in it. Don't get in it. Cause you're going to yeah. want to get in it, but it's going to be like a tidal wave. Yes. In fact, funny that, you said that. There might be tidal waves. It, it absolutely <laughs> yeah. could happen. You know, we yeah. had a situation like this during um, an eclipse period uh, during, um, in 2005, actually with uh, hurricane Katrina, James, it was mm. a condensate degree. So mm. what you're saying is pretty right on actually. Yeah, weather changes too, right? Extreme weather Huge changes. Huge extreme water. weather changes. Yeah. And and also I will say this, that we were talking about this before we went on, James, that you had, um, you started today thinking about old friends or think people yeah. who had died. Yeah, uh, past couple of days. And it's, but today, especially old friends of mine, 40, 50 years ago, well, 40 years ago, I would say more. And who died, a couple of them died of AIDS when AIDS first came out. Wow. And they were good friends that I hadn't heard from them since. Mm. You'd think I would have, but yeah. very clearly. And I was like, oh my gosh, Randy, I'm like, how are you? And it was amazing because, you know, we were best friends and I hadn't wow. thought of him in a long, long time. And several other beings came through. My sister came through yesterday, which she comes a lot, but you mm. used a phrase, Kelly, which I'm, I'm going to give to my friend, uh, a singer to use for a title of a song called uh, Phases of Being. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Phases, Phases of Being. being. Phases yeah. of Being. Yeah. But you just got to step back and observe it. Don't get in it, everybody. And don't get into other people's emotional states and Correct. Their, their arguments and all that. You don't need that energy around you. Just stay neutral. Right. Right. And it has a lot to do with unfinished business, personal business this time. Wow. It's the third yeah. time I've heard unfinished business today. <laughs> That's right. Yes. So, and I'll talk more about the upcoming eclipse on my Thursday show, but 
It's a big deal. It's a big deal, everybody. Well, our, our guest and a very special guest, um, who I've known for quite a while now, uh, Michaela Whaley is, uh, she'll tell you her story, but she's kind of like my protege, I'd say that, if she doesn't mind that. But um, I want to met her, well, she had a beautiful light around her, beautiful level, beautiful light. And uh, I'll, I'll let her tell you guys, but I'm really proud of her. She's done great work from the heart, very genuine, very, very spiritual, very, there you go. So I want to, Michaela Whaley. Hi, Michaela, come on in. <laughs> hey, Hi, Michaela, welcome. welcome. So good to see you. Good to see you too, Kelly. Yeah. So hey. Michaela, tell everybody how we met. And cause you know, I forget a lot, but it was how many years ago? Probably about, gosh, over 10 years. Yeah, over 10 years. I was about 16 or 17 and I'm now 30. So yeah, about 13, 14 years ago. And tell everybody where it was and what happened because it's pretty funny. <laughs> and, and Michaela was telling me this, reminding me, oh, yes, I think we remember this, but I remember yeah. the colors more, you know, that vividly. But tell everybody how we met. Yeah. So obviously back in the day, my mom was always a huge fan of you. And so we would go to your demonstrations. We were at your demonstration. My best friend's sister had come through. And so you're doing the reading, you're getting information, evidential evidence, right? And then all of a sudden you stop in your tracks and you go, are you a medium? And we're talking in a room full of a couple hundred yeah. people. Yeah. And I had said, well, yeah, and you go, it's a yes or no question. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> Typical James. And I said, yes, I am. And then you started to explain the colors that you were seeing around my throat chakra and around, you know, just my body. And so since that moment, it was kind of that light bulb that went off for me. And I said, okay, I had been studying mediumship because of you for years prior to that. But that was really the first initiation to where I was like, maybe I should take this a little more seriously. And, and, and it was really interesting because I've recognized that in other people before, but I never see the results. Like if they're going to listen, if they're going to go on that journey or not. And one of the things about you, which I'm so thrilled is years later, I went into again and you said, yeah, I'm on the journey. I'm on the path now. And thank you to you. And that's when I started helping you and we took classes yeah. together. And But that's it's great cool. to see that. So, Well, and I have to jump in with this because <laughs> I was, I have a very dear friend, one of my oldest friends, Charlene. Charlene, hi, I know you're watching this. Hi, Charlene. Several months ago, she said to me, you know, one of James's protégés is working here at the, at the Crystal Shrine with me, where I know you do readings. And she said, Kelly, and she she had mentioned this to you, but you said that she told you that you'd be on our show. Yep. And what's so funny about that is I remember Charlene telling me the story about you and um, and with Shauna and, and the whole bit. Right. And I just, you know, I just, I got busy and I forgot. And then when James said you were going to be on the show, I said, wait a minute, I know that name. <laughs> I could not get over that. I mean, what a, it's so interesting how spirit brings us all together, isn't it? It really is. And how everything is so connected, right? Yeah. Because, you know, I knew Shauna and CJ or Charlene right yeah. from the shop. And then when I was talking to CJ one day, she goes, wait, you work with James. I know Kelly White. That's my best friend. <laughs> so we started talking and then you know she had said i mean this was probably six to eight months ago but you're going to be on his show one day and i said well we'll see one right and here we are <laughs> and here we are and here exactly. we are so after i made that comment to you what, what tell us about what happened next and how you evolved and what you started doing and tell us your little bit of your journey if you could yeah, you know, so just to kind of start from the get-go of it all, my whole life I've always been very open and things were just a little bit different for me. Everything was very fascinating. And then when I was about 13 is when my uncle, who I was really close with, had passed away. So all these interesting things started happening, lights turning on and off, just different signs and synchronicities. And like I was saying or telling you before, I was sitting in my room and my mom came in and she said, read this. And it was Unfinished Business by James Van Frog. Right. So I read the book and then from about 13 until the first demonstration I ever went to, I was just reading all of your books, just gaining knowledge, gaining understanding, still wasn't quite sure how to interpret the information I was getting. So then after we did the demonstration, which I was just talking to you about, my mom had signed me up for your course with Lynn Probert. Sure. So I was about 18 when I did that course. And so still, you know, not super confident in the gift that I had, not understanding it. I was in the course and the first exercise that you did, James, you said, imagine a beautiful open green field and whatever pops up in the field, just say it. So, of course, I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm seeing orange tulips. I don't know what the orange tulips mean. 
But I say it to the woman across from me and she starts to tear up. And she said, I had an orange tabby, an orange cat named Tulip that passed away last week. Wow. wow. And that was the first instance where I went, whoa, okay, now I'm starting to understand more. So within that course, it just kept happening left and right, images, names, things of that sort. But I was still, so I had moved, like I was telling you, Kelly, I'd moved to LA from Orange County to pursue my dance career. So I was still very hyper-focused on my dance career. But I would still take courses and learn about, you know, mediumship through you. And then I had taken another course. And then the most recent course I took was back with Lynn Prober about, what, a year ago or so. And that's right when I started doing readings. So what was interesting is that time in my life, I had actually got a foot injury, couldn't dance, ended up getting pretty sick. So I'm like, universe, what do you want me to do? You know, where am I supposed to be right now? And it's true when people say live from your heart space, because that's exactly what I did. So I went for a walk one day and then ended up at a spiritual shop, ended up, you know, conversing with one of the women there. Wanted a little bit more structure in my life since things were slow. So I went back and I said, hey, do you have a front desk job? And she goes, no, no, no. I'm interviewing you for mediumship. And so that's where I started actively doing readings. But, you know, it's wild to see, you know, over the last 10 whatever years it's been with you to where I'm at now. And joking around, you know, I was telling you guys, I thought I'd be doing this in another five to 10 years. And spirit and the universe said, no, you're doing it now. Now, that word is very important with spirit. Now. Yes. And they weren't messing around either. But it's been such a lovely journey because using the gift that I have to be able to help others heal and understand that there's nothing to be afraid of when leaving the physical body. Mm -hmm. It's something you can even feel on it. I'm sure James and Kelly, you can both attest to this. But a lot of the times you can feel a person's energy kind of lighten up by the end of a session. Yes, absolutely. So just to be here and be that reminder. That their whole auric field changes. It, it, it is. It lightens them up. You can feel, you sense that light happening. You yeah. know, it's like two tons have been taken away and they just have, the, they have their lives back, you know? You give yes. Them back. Which is so important. Yeah. And, and Michaela, um, and one thing I love about Michaela's work, um, there are a lot of young mediums out there and they just want to be f- famous and well-known and everything. And Michaela's just down to earth and real and ready for the development and d- does the work. Well, thank you, James. And I think that's one of the things just kind of touching base on. And it's a beautiful thing, but a lot more people are kind of waking up to the reality of what we are, where we came from. Right. And so for me, you know, it was a very personal journey, you know, to integrate and to understand and learn the lessons. And so it was always kind of like my baby. Right. That would keep me sustained throughout life. And it's one of those things where I do it for, you know, the cause of the good people and making sure that people are taken care of. Um, I would never in a million years imagine I'd be even in this space, you know, sitting with you, even working with you, discussing this. So it's pretty awesome. Well, one of the great things, Michaela, with you is you're open to discover. You, you, you know, I mean, I teach many, you know, students, I make courses online, but, and, and some of these want to rush through development or get through this. You are someone who takes your time in that art of discovery. And I think you just live for the moment and just let things unfold as they're going to. And that's yeah. what I, one of the aspects of you I really love because you take your time and you don't rush through it. You know, if you discover that art of discovery with you is, is great. And yeah, I love that. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And it does. I mean, you can understand things in a short amount of time, but I think it takes years and years to truly develop not only your gifts and you know, it's a it's a huge responsibility, the work that yes. all of us do, and it's not something to take lightly. So, you know, that's why I've taken my time with the journey and known that in time. And I think that's one of the biggest things, whether you're a medium or not, is just it's hard. It's very hard. But learning to trust the unknown and trust the journey because you have these inklings and these knowings, right, because it's probably going to happen at some point. But it's the when that people worry about. So you got to get rid of that when and just say, all right, we're just going to keep living. Yeah. It's a human side of us that has to have a time, you know, time is period according to them. But yeah, yeah, if you just open yourself up to the experience, I find you more comes, more comes to you. You discover more. Your world changes. It shifts. It really does. And how do you think, Michaela, you changed from, you know, when you first started to now? Like what has been the major changes or insights or things that have changed you? You know, there's less control 
around it. So one of the biggest things you've taught me is whatever you're feeling, whatever information you're getting, just say it. You don't need to control the situation. Mm -hmm. So I'm at the point now versus, and obviously I'm still very young, but years ago when I was much younger, I kind of had this need to prove in the mediumship field, right? Or feel like if I was wrong, then it was a mistake. And now I'm at the point, I think one of the biggest things in the past couple of years for me personally is Mm self-acceptance. And so accepting Mm -hmm. that I can talk to dead people. I can communicate with afterlife, right? If someone else doesn't understand that, that's okay. But this is my journey and this is why I'm here. So once I kind of switched that lens or that perspective, well, I accept myself fully in this. It doesn't matter if someone understands it or if someone agrees with it. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to serve, obviously, God, source, what you believe in, and the people that are still here in the physical and Good I, for I, you for getting that so yeah. young. I really appreciate what you just said, because a lot of people that do this, it takes them a long time to get to that, to where you are with this. Good for you. And um, Kelly, I was going to say that one, one part of media, what you just expressed was for me, I found that, you know, I talk to dead people. Yeah, that's part of it. But I think a, a true medium, and I'm saying a really good medium, if you will, you put judgment on it, but it's a sense of who they are. They know who they are and they really do a, a, a love themselves, a self approval and self love. I think that's a big part of mediumship. I think talking to dead people is a, you know, that happens and we get the remnants of that loving energy, so forth. But it really is a sense of accepting yourself, honoring yourself, surrendering yourself, and connect with that higher force. And it helps us to love ourselves so we can teach other people about loving themselves, I think. That's very true. People are asking about fear. Did you ever have any fear, Michaela? No, actually. I mean, there was maybe one instance where I didn't have my boundaries with spirit where they'd kind of pop in whenever they'd want to, where, you know, I'd be walking around my home in the middle of the night and hello there, right? (laughs) So again, learning under James, he taught me how to have boundaries with spirit. So the fear for me at this point, definitely, there's no fear. If anything, it kind of makes me more excited, right? Kind of almost the sense of there's so much more than what we understand as humans. And so I understand having fear around it for certain people and that's okay. That's something that they're going to have to learn and process on their own time. But for me personally, I think it's quite funny how spirit interacts with me. And so, you know, unless I'm working, doing a session, they really, for the most part, mind their own business. So it's good. And I think, Michaela, it's important that you just uh, talked about it. You know, a sense of humor about things. Don't yeah. take things so seriously. And yeah. you're, lighten up, if you will. Lighten up, yeah. you know. It's really important. Kelly, what about you with the fear when you first started? What, what did you do with that fear? And how did that change and shift like Michaela's talking about? Just curious. I, it took me some time because I had to, you know, I was coming out of a corporate life. And then I had to really deal with, you know, who I was, what I was learning what was happening to me. And so that's why I'm so impressed with how you have done this so young. It took me some time because I had to really be honest with myself of who I was. And I had to get really strong with that. Thank you, James. Literally. Thank you, James, for that. Cause that was a huge deal for me and then owning it and truly owning it. So it it. it was a process for me. And um, yeah, it was a process. It took some time. Well, and don't let me fool you. It was even though I did it in a shorter amount of time, there was a lot of kind of ins and outs to get to the point Mm -hmm. where I am with self-acceptance in it. Um, You know, you get also not only the fear that may come along with it, which for me, again, personally, I didn't have much of, but kind of the naysayers of you can't do that for work. And how do you expect, you know, people to take you serious? <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't have that. I, my fear, if I think about it, was remember when Mavis used to say, it's good to take a no. Yeah. She would say, you're going to hear no. And mm-hmm. I was like, but, but, you know, I didn't want to hear a no. And so no's I had to overcome yeses. that. No yes. are as good as yeses. Yeah. It's a yes, yeah, just really, misunderstood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did, you're right. I mean, I had to really learn to have, you know, learn all of this. And but it, it really a, is self acceptance, Kelly. It really is yeah, self acceptance. Totally. Self-cool. And I, when I was younger, I when I first started this, I didn't know what it was. And personally, I never was afraid of it. But I didn't really care what people thought. I just didn't care. I mean, I used to have skeptics when it, on TV when I first started TV, and they said he's doing cold reading. I didn't even know what the term was. And I was like, they don't know who I am. How do they say who I am when they don't even know me? So that's where I came from. But I always was a sense of a stronger power. There's something out there. And if we can connect with that stronger power and 
you know, change, open people up to that power. That's what it's about. And well, you I, know, interesting, Charlene is, you're a friend, Charlene. My friend Charlene is saying that it was only you, James, back then. It was. It was True. pretty much me. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty much me. Um, John Edward hadn't really come out of it yet. And Sylvia Brown really wasn't there, but she's more of a psychic. It was me. And then, um, yeah. And um, yeah. Right. <laughs> George Emily, Anderson in New York. but And George Anderson. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Emily Prado says, Michaela is amazing. Such a beautiful spirit. So proud to see her here. Oh, thank you, Emily. That's very sweet. I, I think, Michaela, you're a natural, if I would yeah. say it. You're because you're so young. You're just a natural. That's what I'd I say. appreciate that very much. I do. Well, and it's funny, too, just to add into you being one of the first. And Kelly, just to add into what you were saying as well, too, is I'm very, very grateful and very lucky in a sense because my mom is also very spiritual. Yeah. And so it makes a difference, doesn't it? It makes a huge yeah. difference. My so, mother's incredible. Thank <laughs> you. you. Hear that, mom? <laughs> so, mom, incredible. <laughs> and so with her, and it's funny, she was telling me the story of how she even found you, James, and she was watching Larry King live. And she said, This was just so fascinating seeing how he was doing the phone readings. And but really, without her insight, I probably, who knows when I would have found you, because she was the one that gave me the book. So having that space within, not my entire family at the time, but at least with my mom to kind of teach me and guide me that it's okay to feel this way and to get information this way was a did this Did this run in your family, uh, people are asking? You know, it's interesting. I think I'm the first medium. That's something I'll have to confirm completely. However, James knows too, my mom also has mediumship qualities. Oh yeah. So yeah. some people um, choose to develop them or not, but like you said, she's very intuitive herself. So I do think it has been in the family, but maybe there was, like we were discussing, if we backtrack a little bit of fear within some of the other people. Um, but I really, from my understanding, think it started with my mom. And she's such a healer as well, your mom. I mean, really. Yes. And, yes. and she does therapy work too, Kelly. She's Oh, wow. Therapy. Yeah. It helps people. She's wonderful. Cancerian, your mom. Yeah. Can <laughs> yes. Born yep. in cancer. cancer. I remember she was a cancer. Yeah. She's yeah. A cancer. Yep. So, yeah, it's great. Perfect. Mm. Uh, here's some. Kelly gave me such. Oh, Kelly, Karen Rogers, you gave a great reading. Very accurate. Okay. Uh -huh. So, Michaela, what to you is accuracy in a reading? Do That's a great that? question. That is a really good question. You know, huh? right? Well, and James, I'm sure you can attest to this too, because when we get information, usually we know what spirit is talking about. So it's, every reading is very different, but it's pretty rare that I'll get a no. So if I'm bringing through information, it's not super often that something doesn't click. So for me, when I find something to be accurate is I get the image or I hear them, or I just know what spirit is talking about. And then I tell the individual or the sitter that I'm reading and then they'll, you know, confirm it. That gives me the accuracy. And then what's interesting is what I've noticed is when spirit comes through me and then they help me give the information, the more information that I get correct or they help me get correct, it's like they start to speed up. Almost. Yes, 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 yes. Just like yeah. that. Yeah. Because they know you're not thinking about it because you're not you're not in the thinking space. You're just receiving at that point. And they're easy to just drop, lob some information, some emotions in your head, in your mind. And that way you're accepting and they're at such a fast vibration. So we're not in that earthly mind. We can just mm -hmm. accept it and it comes in really, really fast. Yeah. And that's not an easy task sometimes too, right? To get out of your own way, get out of your own space and say, all and right. It's, and it's like spinning plates. Juggling plates, yeah. Juggling plates, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yep, it is. It feels like the money's spinning. Sika Sapai says, "Do you channel, or just channel, or do you do automatic writing too?" Oh, good question. Interesting. I like that question. So it's interesting. I used to write when I first started doing readings, right? At least when I would receive information. James and Lynn at their workshop said, "I remember oh, this very yeah. well." They you said had a spiral notebook on your lap and you were doing little doodles and flowers. I was like, no, 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 you got to put that off. Yep. And I was, you know, I was very nervous because that was kind of my safety net at the time. Right. So I said, all right, well, I'm going to put my, tr again, with that trust in the unknown. And so I don't write anymore when I do readings. It's just straight through. And one of the things James had said to me as well was, well, when you're writing, you're trying to remember things. You don't need to remember anything. You need to just say it as it comes through. Exactly. And so as I started to practice to work that way, I would. Now, when it comes to things like downloads or channeling in general, 
throughout the days I get, I'm sure you both do too, but I'll get information or hear things or maybe let's not go out right now, you know, different types mm -hmm. of things. Your, your those I hold, you know, close to me, personal for me. Some things that I download or that I channel aren't for other people. It's just for my well-being. But yeah, just what you see is what you get. Yeah, which is which is great. It's really right. great. Do you see a uh, spirit during a reading or do you just hear them? That's a good question. So I work in various different ways. I see, I hear, I know. And so what typically happens is I will see with my eyes from time to time. If we go back talking about the fear, I was seeing spirit with my eyes a little too much at one point. So I asked them to slow down. So the best way I can explain it to either a sitter or one of you know the people that I'm working with is if you have a dream and you wake up in the morning and you kind of get images of that dream, I'll get images in my mind's eye or in my third eye of what they look like. So it's interesting. And it also, I do have to say, depends on the loved one that's crossed over. Sure. Because spirit typically, you know, if they were more introverted when they were in the physical form, they may not share as much, right? So, but then you get someone that was, you know, could be very fiery and maybe have a little bit of attitude. And they they typically operate the same way that would make sense to the person that I'm working with. So Michaela, question for you um, from, and this is just me, um, Kelly, you too. So spirit uses different aspects of our mind. So for instance, I do really well with a uh, spirit who say is very outgoing, funny, emotional, and I can really bring them through well. I can't bring through the, the mental person, the person that was really a mental the spirit person in a lifetime or didn't communicate. Right. What do you find, Michaela, do you find that, that you have a certain type that you can really relate to or that you resonate with? Well, and I'm glad you even brought that up, James, because so every reading varies. They're yeah. all very different. And so if I get a spirit or a loved one that was very joyous or kind of silly, I can typically bring through information a lot quicker. If the, let's, you know, just for example, if the person had maybe made a lot of mistakes in life and wronged a lot of people and they know that, it can kind of be more in and out tricky to communicate with them. And I've noticed too, like they almost kind of put up this shield where they don't want me to see in fully. So it's a different experience with every reading that I do. But I agree with what you're saying, James. I love, I love, I love the spirits that are just, you know, like, hey, we're so excited that you're here. And I prefer that, but often, James, I get the mentally challenged, if you will. Yes, that was a, that was a, <laughs> because that's what I'm a therapist, too. Yeah. So I'll, get the one, I'll get the suicide. I'll get the real depressed. I'll get the borderline personality, disorder. personality disorders. You I'll get all get of that. all of them, you know. And then what happens, though, then when I'm working with the loved one that is here with me, um, it's very healing for them. Right. You know, so there's a lot of healing that goes on on all sides with this. Oh, yeah. In many sides. And, you know, just because people pass over doesn't mean they know how to communicate. Oh, so true. Time. And in fact, yeah. do you guys have this situation if you're working with somebody and the, per the loved one's on the other side and they're very quiet? Oh, my oh, goodness. And then I'll say, <laughs> were they quiet in life? Oh, yes, they were very quiet. Oh, OK. And just then I want to make sure. Once, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, and that's what's, you know, kind of funny about being a medium and being able to connect in the way that we do is when you get someone, because we know our gift, we know that we're able to pull people through in that sense. But when you get someone that's not as communicative, and I always explain it, especially if someone's, you know, loved one has crossed over recently, they have to kind of almost learn like a human would a whole new language to Correct. communicate yeah. with us. Correct. So it's it's interesting but I get, you know, you get all kinds of, all walks of life and all kinds of spirit, all kinds of people. So it keeps me on my toes. And I'm, I'm going to share something with you guys, which I want to find your perspectives too, that when I do, and it doesn't happen all the time, but let's say I'm doing a demonstration, bringing a spirit through. And I have that spirit that is not really talkative and they're very, what I do in my mind is I try to find that love in that spirit, mm -hmm. that light. Mm -hmm. And I'll actually send them a thought of, it's okay, come closer. It's okay. It's mm -hmm. fun. Come closer. Have you guys had that before? Do you work like that sometimes? Just curious. I have said to them, please come a little closer. <laughs> I, I, I say that a lot. Say, so, can you just speak up a little longer? Can you just come a little closer to me? But I know exactly what you're talking about, James. It's an interesting dynamic. Well, I, well, I try to see it. that love in every single yeah. person and those that have passed over, especially ones that have passed over, have some, like Michaela was saying, hardship or, you know, during the life review, they realize they didn't 
finish everything and they're really <laughs> beating themselves up. So I will say to them in my mind, it's okay. You know, your loved yeah. one is here in this, in the earth world and let's just make this happen. Right. And they love that opportunity to come in like that. They love when you give them space to express themselves. That's so true. That's so true. Yeah. Well, and that's the point, right? How you guys, I like that too, where you kind of call them in and you give them more love. For me, I'll kind of slow down my energy so they feel a little yeah. bit safer to come in. Yeah. Right. But it's a fine line because some spirits just don't want to speak. They'll give me breadcrumbs of information, which is still beautiful, right? It's still evidence for the sitter. But sometimes I'm like, come on, guys, I know you can do a little bit better. Yeah. Sometimes, do you guys ever have trouble with how they pass? I don't th think it's all that important often, but um, some souls will tell me right away and some are like, they don't want to go down that road. I, I don't get much. I get that sometimes, but yeah, I used to get it more in the beginning, their death condition, but I don't get now, that. Well, I, I barely get it now. It's funny. Which is bizarre that you guys are saying that because they show me frequently kind of how they crossed or if there was. See, okay. The so for me, when I started down this road, I saw a lot of things that I didn't, shouldn't have seen. And I remember saying Same. literally out loud. <laughs> and I said, you know what? I don't want to know. I don't want to, don't show me that again. Like I've seen it once. I don't need to see it again. Yeah. And they've been really respectful of that. Which is yeah. beautiful too. Michaela, how about you? Have you seen, seen things that you're like, oh, that's too much right now. Take it back a little bit or. You know, there's only been a handful of readings that have been where I've had to take a moment after. Cause usually I can bounce back fairly quickly with, you know, grounding all of that. There's a few readings I've done with more traumatic exits. Um, you know, and that's when it's a little bit more tricky because I have to remove my emotions still right. from the situation. And, but it always turns out what I at least have encountered within myself when it's more of a traumatic situation with a loved one that has crossed over, they still almost kind of encapsulate it all with love. So despite how they crossed, they show what they've learned and they still kind of go on to explain, but I'm okay, I'm at ease, I'm at peace. Yeah, well, along great, those I'm lines, sorry. when you when when you have a challenge reading like that, where it's emotional, do you ever find yourself um, crying afterwards? You know what? As weird as this sounds, no. I may feel a little down, mm -hmm. but one of I think the main reasons I'm able to do this work is because as much as I am a part of it, I really have learned how to separate. I'm very impressed with, honestly impressed with that because that was how I, it took me a while to get that muscle. It took mm -hmm. me a while to get there. I don't do it anymore. Because you're a caretaker, it, Kelly. You're I'm caretaker. such a caretaker. And that, you know, I'd hear a story and I, I, you know, I'd be, you know, in the middle of this side and this side and with a story. And I, I mean, it also, you know what? I had to get that same muscle in therapy too. Yeah. with a therapy class. And I, I think we got to remember that's also that spirit world knows what's going on. Yeah. And when they give us certain conditions of the death condition or certain uh, traumas that happen to the soul, they're, they're working with us. They're exercising our minds. They're helping, they're helping our mediumship to expand. So they'll give us these little bits and pieces of things and it can be very traumatic and very dramatic. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just to exercise us and to let us know that we have that those sets of wings to use. And uh, I think they practice with us. You know, they will practice how much they can give us, what we can understand, how far we can go. And Kelly, when I get the emotional stuff, I will get it. And I feel many times I'll say, oh, I'm feeling it. I got it. I'm going to cry. Yeah. I just say, I'm going to cry to acknowledge it, uh, that I mm -hmm. feel it. And then it, then it goes. But it is very true what Michaela is talking about, being like a surgeon, being objective. Yeah. You can't do the operation. You're afraid of blood. No, you cannot. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, this is a great question. This is from Marisol. And she says, can a spirit come through if they don't speak English? Great question. Yes. You know, James, do you want to go ahead first? or? Yeah, I, I would just say that it doesn't matter what language they spoke to because that's yeah. the human part of it. Uh, thoughts that we receive are really universal thoughts, memories, and personality traits. That's that doesn't take it. It's often I'll say, mean. do they speak another language? Because I'll get some sort of different thing that's different. I can't quite get it. Well, Kelly, when I was doing a lot more, it was they'd set up the, the verbs, the adjectives, yeah. and that would be all different when they'd put it together. I knew there was something like a foreign tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michaela, so what do you, have you found that with uh, certain people that different language? Anything? Well, and you know, I haven't run into it a lot yet, right? You I will. mean, I will. And I will. Globally right. traveling, young lady. Yeah. <laughs> You will. You will. And, 
Yeah, it's going to happen. But what's interesting is I've done a few readings for people out of state where they speak two different languages. So for instance, they might chime in with Spanish or something of that sort. And I'll still, if I can't hear it, I'll still say what they're saying, even if I don't know what the word means. And then I do my best. It's more of an energy based thing. So I ask them to either slow down what they're saying or give me the energy or the feeling behind the word that they're saying. And then that's how I can interpret what they're trying to portray. And sometimes when they come through in the foreign tongue, it's really interesting because you can get the names like that or something because it's a foreign language. I did readings in, around the world in Brazil. I remember Brazil was like 2,000 people. And I remember it was what these Portuguese names and I spitting them out left and right because to me, it didn't mean anything. It was just sounds that I'm hearing. Yeah. And really interesting how spirit works because it was a great translator. And I found that when I had a translator, you know, it really makes a big, big difference if a good translator or a not so good translator. It's so interesting being mediums because you have to have a good translator. It's almost like a good guide. And the first half of this uh, demonstration, I remember it was, it was really good. And the translator in my ear, because it's all about listening and the sounds, she was excellent. She was just excellent. Mm -hmm. And I had this compassion for her. And the second uh, part of the demonstration after their intermission, this gentleman came through, I think his name was well, Wally or something, real detailed. And nobody in the audience was taking it, not one person, you know, it's like, uh. and then all of a sudden I hear in my ear, James, that's my father. Aww. It was the translator's Aww. father who Aww. came through. Aww. And it was almost like, wow, and here's a gift for her for helping all these people Aww. translate. Oh my God. You, you really never know how they're going to work with you. you the, don't. It, the intelligence yeah. of that world is so incredible. Wow. So Michaela, do you work with animals? We get a lot of questions about that. You know, it's interesting because a reading I did earlier today, her animal, her dog ended up coming through. And so it's one of those things where for the most part, you know, I don't say strictly, but I work with the human side of it, but I'll get animals coming in, which is very interesting. And I do my best to interpret. Sometimes they'll show me their favorite ball or something of that sort of color, the shape, the size of the animal. Mm -hmm. But if it pops in, I'm willing to take it. I don't put any boxes around the information that I receive. Yeah. And, and Michaela, a question for you I have is, you know, you actually you're psychic and intuitive and medium. And so, so if someone comes to you for a reading, mm -hmm. do they have to tell you what kind of reading they want or you'll just go into the mediumship or do you tell them ahead of time or? That's a very good question. So typically it's not even me that chooses, right? It's spirit that's helping me choose, but I'll okay. explain the reading as medium, psychic, intuitive. And in a sense, they all kind of go hand in hand with each other. Um, typically it's, you know, it's hit or miss. So when I do a psychic reading, it's always the person's loved one help guiding me through, right? Whether they have any support or guidance that they want to give to the sitter. Mm -hmm. But typically when I have a loved one here with me, they'll want to talk all about themselves, evidential things that would make sense to the sitter. And then I'll notice, and it depends on the situation, right? If someone's really there for mediumship, it'll typically be all mediumship. But I've noticed that typically within a few minutes or halfway through the session, the loved one will start saying they shouldn't work here anymore, or they need to move directions, or they kind of help guide me. So that's where the psychic work starts to come in. And intuitive, I mean, my whole life, I've been a healer, you could yeah. say, meaning yeah. a shoulder to cry on, helping other people. I just, I love to help in general. And so some returning clients that I have, it's intuitive coaching as well, too. So teaching them how to trust their own intuition and, you know, using the guidance that I can give them to kind of further their own journey. But it's interesting. I would say just to kind of sum all of that up, I'm more of a medium than a psychic, but I'm happy to tap into like, if someone has a question, tap into the essence of the energy of the situation and see what spirit or what my higher self can kind of bring through to help them. And that, that'll evolve too. That'll change as you move forward with your, with your life. You're yeah. going to change your mediumship. Your your work will change. It'll be, yeah, you'll see how it evolves for sure. Kelly, yours has changed that way, right? Oh, it, it is totally changed. I mean, it has really gone into deep grief work, actually. I've and, really and gone you didn't into expect that. that, right? You no, did not that. see that one coming. No, no. But, you know, as, as we get older, as August said to me, my grandson said to me, you know, you're not young, Gigi. So as I get older, it's like, oh, well, thank you for that compliment. Um, but as I get older, it's, I notice, I mean, I work with a lot of, you know, people that have lost spouses and it's really taken a real deep turn into that actually. Wow. So I do a lot of grief work. 
Um, do you do a lot of grief work? I mean, mediumship, we do a lot of grief work, but Michaela, do you also do yes grief Yes and no. Again, right now, it's kind of a big pool of different types of readings. But what I wanted to add in is it's already kind of that knowingness within me, like I've trusted to get to the point I'm at where it's, you know, my big toe is in the water right now. And I do great with the information I receive, but it's going to be a whole different ball game as I not only. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But there's definitely grief work when it comes to certain sitters, whether, you know, some sometimes when someone loses a parent pretty quickly, or if it's a sibling, um, you know, I've done readings for, you know, younger people that have lost their partner. So there's definitely some grief work that goes into it, but in a, a weird way, and it's once in a balloon moon, but it went in a weird way when I get Thank a you. That was a message for me. Thank you. Go on. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> my, my mother's messages, whenever you hear once in a blue moon, I'm there. So oh my you. gosh. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Michaela. Oh, that's Sorry too to interrupt. Funny. No, please. But, but that's one of those things where in a weird way, because I can hold so much space for people, I weirdly enjoy being able to be the person to kind of catch them as they're grieving. Yeah, my, my work was uh, all about um, uh, children that had died. I worked a lot with parents, uh, compassionate That's friends. Right. And yeah, for many years. And you wrote a my, book about it. I wrote so, a book about it, Growing Up in Heaven. Yeah. And that was my specialty kind of in mediumship for a long time was that. They gave me that to work with, which is a hard one. one of the hardest lessons on this earth is to lose a child. So that's a whole, you know, different ball game entirely. Yeah. But you'll change. Your mediumship changes as you change and expand and understand things. It has to change. It has to evolve. Uh, one thing, Michaela, I want to ask you, Kelly, I thought this was fascinating. Michaela and I were talking yesterday about this, how mediumship is changing now. And for your generation, Michaela, mm -hmm. it's changing. What do you see that's different than, you know, when you first met me, like how mediumship has shifted and Zooms and online and COVID? Where do you see the future? And what do you think about that? You know, to tie in, if we backtrack again towards the beginning, saying a lot more people are coming up, you know, online or awake to what we innately are. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful to see how these people are kind of, you could say, popping out of the woodworks, doing a lot of this work. So there's kind of a double edged sword with it, in my opinion, because um, I know a lot of young mediums that obviously not only I've met through you, James, but met on my own. And the way they work, especially with social media now, is so different. I do prefer when it comes to Zoom. I can do Zoom. I can do phone call readings. There's something about being in front of the person that I like the experience more. Yeah. But, um, you know, the one thing that I would say, kind of the double-edged sword, is just to use your own precaution if you're going to get a reading, especially if it is from someone that, you know, I'm speaking like myself, someone that is younger to make sure that they're developed and that they're honest and working with integrity in their work. Big part of it. Big, uh, yeah. big part of it. Yeah. yeah. Very true. Wow. Uh, wow. I, I wanted to say quickly, Preston Stubbs is on. I yes. Sort of, he went to Brazil with me, him and his mom, Bre Preston. Hi, Preston. It's been years, but we went to Brazil. We had many experiences in Brazil, Preston and his mom. <laughs> I think her name is Marie, if that's correct. She, fun, fun, fun. So. Just oh want to shout out. <laughs> Ness, uh, Ness says, James, I remember when I first saw you on Oprah. I don't know. But we came number one because it hadn't been on my show yet. <laughs> Thanks, Oprah. Oh, Thanks, Oprah. Laura Isaacs makes a good point here. She says, having discernment. And I think when I was coming up as a medium, discernment was everything. I think totally. it's such an important piece uh, when you're working with other people to learn right. discernment, to really understand how you say it, what you say, watching the person, making sure the person is taken care of, you know, because 100%. one, you know, one false move could really do a lot of damage. I often say, Kelly, it's like holding a very thin piece of glass. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's really is. You can destroy their lives completely. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Or build them yeah. up. We're here to build people up, not tear them down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Betty Moore Scott says, I love how you are explaining your different specialties in mediumship, like old friends chatting. It's so true. You're a very old soul. I have to say, Michaela, very old soul yeah. here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think this is my first rodeo. I think yes. it's been thousands and thousands of lifetimes. <laughs> Seriously, in order to do this gift well, I believe that is the case. And I know on the other side, we all work at our craft before we come here, whether you're a musician or a dancer or whatever it is that you do. I mean, you work on that side and you bring this gift in here. 
And I, I think also, Kelly, um, and uh, you know, Mikhail talked earlier about dancing, and I think, mm -hmm. I think mediumship is very creative. I think it's oh, a yeah. creative energy, and I think we tap into that creative part of ourselves and use that energy that way. Well, and one of the biggest things, and I still dance to this day, but one of the biggest things I've loved about dance is you're speaking without speaking, right? So using that kind of creative aspect is, and regardless of what you're feeling that day, you let it out within movement, right? So it's interesting to see, and in a weird sense, you know, James and Kelly, in a weird sense, dance kind of set me up for this work to be able to be in front of people and feel confident in front of people. Um, but it's interesting because now that I'm a little bit older and my perspective has shifted with dance, I use dance purely for kind of releasing and back for the love mm. of it versus, you know, LA with dancing, it's dog eat dog. And I lost the reason on why I started dancing. Wow. Um, but it is, it's, they're all creative. And I think that's what helped me because I was so open with my passion for dance that I was channeling without even realizing I was channeling through movement. Well, interesting enough, James, whenever you do anything live, you get the crowd up, you're <laughs> dancing, you get everybody up moving, and that really helps. Mm -hmm. It lightens oh, yeah. the whole energy up. You have to shift the energy. And for your audiences that are cold and stale, which there are, you gotta mm -hmm. get that, you gotta change that energy immediately in order, to, in order to work, in order to create that space for spirit to work, you gotta mm -hmm. bring the energy up sometimes for sure. Yeah, I was a dancer also <laughs> when I was younger. Yeah, and oh I was a, a singer, I, I legit voice and the whole thing. But That's I awesome. gave up. Yeah, I gave up that work to do spirit. I did do spirit communication. I gave up my theatrical background, but wow. I still do it. Obviously, very theatrical. But <laughs> that was my first love. My first passion is, I guess, expression and singing and dancing, show tunes and so forth. So I, I love that. That's amazing. Oh my. Um. I have a question for you. Do you do any meditation before you, what is your practice before you go to, to work? With good question, Kelly. That is a good question. You know, every day is a little bit different because meditation is something I do daily. Mm -hmm. And then I really, what helps me a lot is music. So whether that's different frequency music, like Hertz music, but a lot of the times I even have this playlist that I have set up that it's called mediumship preparation that I'll listen to okay. before I do my readings. And it helps me just connect and relax and get into my body instead of my mind. But I'll typically, if it's not meditation or if it's not listening to music, what I'll typically do is call upon my spirit team, do some type of protection, but call upon my spirit team. They're always around, but just come in a little bit closer and then ask them to work with me and help bring through a successful reading for the sitter. But there's, I like to use various tools when it comes to getting in the zone for things. But I would say for me personally, meditation or music are the two that really help. Hmm. Kayla, what do you do, Kelly? I actually listen to music before. I, I love, I have certain songs that put me in that space. Yeah. Exactly what you just said. Mm -hmm. I also meditate every day and I have a real strong practice of it. And it really just centers me, grounds me. And off I go to the races. Yeah. There you go. You know. it, it's a mind shift, isn't it? Mindset. It's a mind shift. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. James, what about you? What do you do? I play with Pearl, my doggy, mm -hmm. and um, I connect with her. But I also then I sit in the quiet and I get that mind space and I just raise the vibration by, you know, really bringing the power up and just um, feeling the love in the space and, you know, feeling the love from the spirit people. And that's it. And then I don't overthink it. And I just put myself in that space and then start the reading on Zoom, whatever, right into it. And after a while, I may have done it 40 years, there comes a point where you're in the space and you're ready. And then it's just a, like turning the light on, shift mm -hmm. that light. Yes. Right. Yeah. You found right. that Kelly. Yeah. And that's because you have nothing to think about. You just are, and you just open up oh. that space for them. Yeah, exactly. Another thing that is really important is I've found out, and this is, I teach this to all my students is have that art of discovery. Like as you're sitting as a medium, what am I going to learn from the spirits today? Wow. What's going to happen? How's this going to change my life? How's it going to teach me? And how am I going to help other people? That, right. that that's what I put in there too before I start. And we get surprises as mediums too when <laughs> we're working. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. I had a, a wild experience the other day. I was wearing this bright pink top. I'd gone shopping. I bought a bright pink top. It's something I would have never bought in a million years, but it was matching something. And the reading, the first reading out the gate, there was a man who was wearing the exact fuchsia, a male wearing this fuchsia pink top. Fuchsia pink. I'm wearing fuchsia pink. And it turned out 
his sister had passed away. She'd been murdered, actually. And oh. it turned out that when the person that was convicted was convicted, he swore he would wear her favorite color. Wow. And the message from his sister to him when, when I was wearing the, the same exact color was this was a real thing. Wow. And he, you know, then he could understand it. It was really amazing. So I, that was for me a huge, like I'm constantly in awe. Aren't you yes. guys in awe of spirit? Well, always. And that's one thing I'm glad you touched base on because, you know, it's not every reading I do, but a lot of the readings, I feel like I learned something. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And you got to yeah. be that way. You got to be that way. Yeah. Uh, Renee's putting this next okay. week. Like, my webinar is Wednesday at three o'clock, everybody. It's a free webinar for the Psych and Intuitive Workshops. It's a free one. So we're going to talk about different exercises to do and have fun. So that's three o'clock at uh, vampirog.com and uh, check it out. <laughs> do it. You won't oh, be disappointed. There's the link right there. That's what you get. Yep. Oh, and you get twenty yes. percent on right now on the right day now. Yeah, course. yeah, yeah. So there's a Mystical Arts course. class. Cool. That's right. So that's on-demand courses and certification courses that we're doing that for spring, and that's the code. Yeah. Great. So that's great. how we're able to keep everything going is to is help people. <laughs> exactly. Oh, and Renee, would you put on? I have a class. Yeah, very, yeah, very exciting. There very exciting is. with Janelle Campbell. She's going to yeah. be on with us next week. And uh, we're so excited about this, Yay. too. And we're going to be doing a starseed event. And Michaela, you are definitely a starseed. There is no oh, yeah. doubt about it. <laughs> no doubt. And if you have any questions, whatever, if you think, what is a starseed? I mean, we're people that, souls that are not from around here, as I like to say, we think differently, we feel differently. We bring in a certain light and energy. You might feel very like different growing up. Please take our online class. It's a Zoom class on May 10th, and it's going to be really extraordinary. We're going to talk all about the characteristics of star seeds and what their purpose is, what your purpose is now. Here. Well, Kelly, you did that here. Like we did that two shows on we And we, we were blown away. I was blown away, and people were blown away. And you were into such spe specific detail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to get details, and we're going to be doing um, a meditation with it, too, James. It's okay. going to be extraordinary. And you know, Janelle, she's a yeah, fabulous. I'll, I'll be there. I'll be in attendance. Yeah. Oh, you got to come. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be so much fun. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And people can reach you, Michaela, through your website. Renee, would you post that again, please? Because everybody wants to know how to reach you. And Renee is going to post that in just a second. Yeah. It's going There's to go a lot up of, again. A lot of, yeah, Here we go. go. It's <laughs> MichaelaWally.com. Whaley, everybody... right? Whaley? Yep, Whaley. But that's Whaley. okay. Yeah. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the best way to reach me. So at the bottom, you'll see where my email is. And then go ahead and send me an email. And then we'll go ahead and book up a session when we both have time. And, you're, and you're, you're booked up now for a week or so? I'm pretty, yeah, right now, you know, I'm actually pretty booked up. So I'm booking into next week and then probably the following week. So it's one of those things. Um, if you do want to do a reading with me, try to email me as soon as possible and I'll make sure I get back to you. And you do some live work in Burbank, California. So, so if, if you happen to be in anywhere near the Burbank area, the Crystal Shrine is a fabulous crystal sh uh, sh store. It's fabulous. And you can have a reading live. Yep, exactly. And that's like I was saying, I enjoy doing Zoom or whatever it is. But if it's in person, there's something a little bit different about the energy exchange. I agree. So if you're yeah. in the LA area, just go ahead and email me or call the Crystal Shrine and we can set something up. That's great. And Kelly, yeah. you have a show Thursday? I have a show Thursday. Ask me anything this Thursday night. And we're going to be, I'm going to be talking specifically about the April 8th eclipse, eclipse. and how to prepare for the April 8th eclipse. Because this is a big deal. This is a huge deal. You know, in Texas, I just came back from Texas. They have the National Guard out, James. This will be National Guard. My it's roommate gonna... is going with an RV with his friends going down to Austin. They were okay, have and they're going to see my little brother Theo right. in both tech <laughs> because they're playing right. for the for the eclipse. Wow, <laughs> who knew? I mean, it is so funny how spirit works, isn't it? Isn't it? It's a wacky time. It's going to be an amazing time, everybody. Wow. Well, Michaela, thank you very much. Really. Oh, thank yeah. you guys so much. It was so lovely. Such an honor to be able to be a part of this. And oh, thank you, Charlene, for telling us about it. Yes. Thank you, CJ. <laughs> CJ, I'll come see you at the shop. And then I will be attending your Star Seed event, too. Oh, great. <laughs> great, great, great. Looking forward to that. Me Thanks, too. everybody. Thanks, Thanks Renee. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Renee. Renee. We'll see you later. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher, James Van Prague.
and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. That was great. Maybe we changed some lives. And maybe opened up some minds. Which way do I turn? Uh, right. Uh, I, I mean, left. The James and Kelly Show.